Hi, everybody. It's such an honor, incredible pleasure to have Professor Arup Chakravarti here from MIT um, to inaugurate the April 2023 version of Living Histories. Arup, we are all dying to hear your Living Histories. Please take it away. Thank you. You know, like a TV commercial that also says, uh, don't try this at home, the narrative to follow has the disclaimer, do not follow this career trajectory. Chances of success are tiny. So I started graduate school in the fall of 1983 to pursue a PhD in chemical engineering. And um, at that time in that field, the fashionable thing to do was um, to take or collect data on a reactive system coupled to various transport processes, write down um, nonlinear partial differential equations for the system, fit the parameters to the data, and look at the interesting phenomena in this nonlinear system. But I thought it might be more meaningful if we could understand the microscopic origins of these parameters. And so I started to link quantum and statistical mechanics calculations to these phenomenological models. There were roughly 40 years ago uh, in engineering, that was a pretty crazy thing to do. And so I got only two interviews for faculty jobs, but fortunately one of them worked out and I started my early career at Berkeley, which was a fantastic place to be. And this is the kind of work I did to make my early career and the topics where had nothing to do with biology or medicine. And this became popular and is popular in engineering departments now, but in the mid nineties, I started to get very interested in uh, more basic aspects of statistical physics. And I worked on very abstract questions. And I must confess that I watched with envy and sometimes dis distress uh, as to how my peers with similar skills were working on such exciting problems of the time as phase diagrams of block copolymers, protein folding, et cetera. And then a series of happenstances and strokes of good fortune led me to work on immunology and my work in that field has been by far the most satisfying things that I have done. So in October of 1999, a independent postdoc at Berkeley, Jay Groves, uh, showed me a paper in science on the immune synapse because he thought that it had something to do with a paper I'd written the preceding year. I didn't understand anything about this paper, but I did understand it had nothing to do with what I had done before. Nonetheless, ensuing January of 2000, I had a year off from teaching in committees. And so I saw this paper on my desk and I thought I'd spend a couple of days uh, trying to understand at least what this paper was about. And um, this couple of days soon became several months because you see in those days, I, my biology education ended in the eighth grade. So every couple of sentences, I wouldn't know what the words meant. And those were days before Wikipedia. And so you had to go to the library to actually understand what they meant. But then I thought, you know, some of the concepts of statistical physics could help shed light on the main questions raised by that paper. That is, what is the function of the synapse and how does it form? So we wrote a paper on the mechanism of formation, but the really important question was, what is the function of the synapse? We had some ideas on this. And so I submitted a abstract for a keystone meeting. Then several lucky things happened. My abstract was accepted. I was a nobody in immunology. Two, the two principal authors of that science paper came to my poster. Three, they decided to test some of our predictions, which basically said that most of the time the synapse did something of the opposite of what had been speculated in that science paper. Four, by some freak of chance, even though we knew so little immunology that we should have gotten it right, wrong, 
we were right. And there was this science paper, and then these immunologists became my publicist, telling other immunologists, yes, this guy, they does some strange statistical physics and so on, and can help. And so I started collaborating with other immunologists, and I've had the enormous privilege of collaborating with diverse basic and clinical immunologists over the years. I should also highlight my many collaborations over two decades with my statistical physics colleague, Maran Kordar. Shortly after 2003, I stopped doing everything else I was doing and focused only on immunology. And then in 2009, I got interested in the human immune response to infection and virology. And that too was serendipitous. Bruce Walker at Mass General Hospital came to talk to me about starting a new institute that he had money from, from a donor called Terry Reagan, which was going to be a multidisciplinary institute to think about human immunology and vaccines, especially HIV. And I told him that I did not want to work on this because HIV had thousands of people working on it, and I, man of modest intellect, and I don't like to work on problems, therefore, that have many people working on it because then I, I'm not smart enough to do something important before someone else does. Then he asked me whether I wanted to go to Africa to visit where, places where he collected data. I said yes, because I had never been to Africa. And there in Durban, I saw how the fabric of that society had been ripped apart by HIV. And so on the way back, I told Bruce, you know, I don't need any credit for this. If I can contribute anything, I'm going to try. And my work on viral fitness landscapes, human immunology, has been very, very satisfying and fulfilling. Indeed, now, a good part of my work is focused on how vaccines might be able to evolve antibodies that can target diverse strains of mutable viruses. A beautiful problem at the intersection of statistical physics, immunology, and medicine. Then in 2006, my biology colleagues, Rick Young and Phil Sharp, got me interested in the aspect of gene regulation. And we ended up describing transcriptional condensates, which has become very popular now. But um, it is a part of my research interest, but my passion is in immunology and it, the risk of great self-aggrandization. I feel great pleasure to see that the community working at the interface of statistical physics and immunology is large and rapidly growing now. But in many of these meetings, I'm now the old man, but I'm going to try and do something now that is very different from an old person. I'm going to try and work on a completely new problem in immunology that I've never worked on before. Well, I've been asked to end by, with some words of wisdom to young people. I'm not sure I have anything really to say, but let me make two points. One, follow your passion, but perhaps be a bit more careful than I was. And two, and more important, no matter what aspect of bio biological physics you work on, I urge you to try your best to learn the pertinent biology as deeply as you can, because otherwise you will end up defining questions that are not real, addressing them, declaring victory, and no one will care. And some biophysics that is that way these days. And stay away from that. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you so much, Arup. Uh, audience, please feel free to send me questions via chat. Let me get started with a question myself. Uh, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, were there early childhood uh, incidents, influences that pointed you in the direction that you ended up going in with the expectation of good fortune? Well, I don't know what led me to become an optimist, but I can tell you that I wanted to 
when I was a child, I wanted to be a scientist. No one in my family had ever been one. And uh, when I was an undergraduate, I was told by my grandfather, who had great influence on in my life, that it's hard to make a living as a scientist. I was growing up in India. And he said, however, you can make a living as an engineer, even if you're not that good. And so that's why I got an engineering degree. But in the end, you see, uh, I uh, <laughs> ended up uh, being a scientist who, however, has a trace of an engineer in me in that I like to work on fundamental questions that need to be solved with a because a practical application depends on it. Wow. Uh, we have time for another question or two and a uh, somewhat shy audience at this point. So on behalf of the audience, I will ask you another question, which is that often in these talks, the scientists tell us a humanizing aspect of their lives, which is completely orthogonal to their science. So that's the question. Well, um, I have a vice. And the terrible vice I have is that I am a big fan of the National Football League. And so I do not work on Sunday afternoons. And one of my great pleasures has been to go to uh, five different Super Bowls with either my wife or my daughter. So that's a part of me that what people find difficult to guess. Thank you so much, Aru, uh, for such a sporting answer and a very inspiring talk. On that note, I'm clapping on behalf of the audience and closing the recording.